So enough basics. We came here to code, so let's get coding. In my first cell, now, now Python as a language has thousands of functions, thousands of built-in functions and classes that you can take advantage of. But in order not to have a gigabyte program every time you write a small program, you import libraries. And importing means that you're making available this particular library and the functions that are included. So the first thing I'm going to import is requests. Now I'm also going to put a comment here. So everything from here out, everything from the hash key is a comment. And I'm going to say that this is the Apache HTTP library. And I'm going to warn you right up front, if you're going to hang with me on this. Somebody told me once I typed 280 words per minute forward and 250 backwards for about a net 30. So you'll see a fair amount of backspacing. That's just comes with the territory here. So I import requests. That's going to let me go read this URL. And we're going to pull it in. And we know that it's XML. So we'll need to parse that XML. And for that, I'm going to import XML.eTree. So the element tree dot element tree. Now what I'm doing here is I'm importing just one element out of that whole library. So I'm not bringing in the whole library. And not only am I importing that, and let's keep up our commenting here and let's say XML parsing. So not only am I importing that element tree portion of the library, but I'm going to alias it as ET. ET for element tree. So from this point on, I can just use ET dot to reference the, the class members and in the class elements. So I'm also pretty typical. If I want to do file things, and I may want to save these files off as I pull them in, and this is just file and system level functions, I'm going to import the OS. So operating system level things. And I'm also going to import pandas. Pandas is our scientific data frame. Basically, it's going to let us turn that XML tree into something that resembles more of a table, something that I can do selects and joins and those kind of things from. And I'm going to import pandas as PD. So this is our pandas data frames, structures, etc. If you're into deep learning, you'll find that pandas is almost a requirement. So next, I'll import NumPy as NP. And NumPy is used by pandas. So it's a requirement to bring it in in order to use the full pandas data set. So used by pandas. And now, we came here to plot. We're going to wrangle, and we're going to plot the data that we find in the pitch FX data. So to enable inline plotting, I'm going to say percent mat plot lib inline. And we'll talk about more, more about that later. Now I'm also going to use, as you saw earlier when we did the print statement, I also use a library called term color. And what that lets me do and I'll show you that real quickly. From term color, import colored. And again, keep let's keep our documentation going here. And that lets me do colored output. What do I mean by that? So let's just stop there and move on to the next cell. Okay, now if I Let's go back to this one. If I run this cell, you notice I get no errors. So it tells me it ran as sequence 10. And I got no errors, which means everything worked. It correctly imported requests. It imported the pandas, imported my term color. So I'll show you how term color works here. I'll say print hello world. And if I run that cell, I get the classic 
hello world and I get it in the color black. So now I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to say print and in this case I say colored which was the function that we pulled out of that term color library and then I just do the same thing. In this case let's say hello back period and it requires a second element to the call which is the color you want it printed in. So notice now I have hello back but to the colored function I'm providing two parameters. One is the text I want to print and one is the color I want to print it in and when I run that cell you see what that's going to do for us. That's going to help us when we start spewing out hundreds of lines of output code. It's going to let us color or backlight or highlight certain elements of that and that will come in handy later.